is a game of gains and losses. Let's suppose that in two consecutive plays, a team moves forward for a gain of five yards, then is thrown back for a loss of three yards. Directions on these two plays, we can call a gain of five yards, positive five yards, and a loss of three yards, negative three yards. Positive and negative numbers like these are called signed numbers and they can be used to indicate direction or quality. To avoid confusing these signs of quality with addition or subtraction signs, signed numbers are sometimes enclosed in parentheses. Now let's go back to the football game for a moment and think about the counting numbers you used in arithmetic. We can picture numbers such as these as corresponding to points on a line. To illustrate the use of this number line, we can do some very simple arithmetic operations. To show two plus four, we count off two units, then four more. One, two, three, four. The answer is six. Now a simple subtraction illustration. Five minus two. Start at five and count back two units. One, two, and there's the answer, three. But suppose the problem is 2 minus 5. For instance, if a team is penalized 5 yards after a gain of 2 yards, how would you show this on the number line? You'd start at 2 and count back 5. But you can see that this is not possible with just the numbers of arithmetic. How can it be done? By enlarging the system of numbers. To do this, numbers are added to the number line that are less than zero, counting to the left. These numbers to the left of zero are called negative, while the numbers to the right are now called positive. This enlarged system is the system of positive and negative numbers. Movement to the right is positive and numbers become larger. Movement to the left is negative and numbers become smaller. Remember, these are not signs of operation, as the plus and minus signs used in arithmetic. These positive and negative signs are signs of direction or quality. The value of a number, without regard to its sign, is called its absolute value, and may be written this way, between vertical bars. The absolute value of a number shows its distance from zero, but not which side of zero the number is on. Let's consider the rules for using positive and negative numbers. By reading a thermometer, we can illustrate the rules for adding signed numbers. You can think of a thermometer as a vertical number line. For temperatures above zero, we use positive numbers. For temperatures below zero, we use negative numbers. Let's suppose that the column moves up from zero to 20 degrees. Now it moves up 10 more degrees. We find the overall change by adding the absolute value 20 to the absolute value 10. The answer is 30, the total distance moved. 30 is an absolute value written between vertical bars. Because both movements were in the positive direction, the result is 30 above zero. So the sum of positive 20 and positive 10 is positive 30. In this second example, the column moves in the negative direction down 10 degrees from zero, and then 10 more degrees in the same direction. You can see that the total movement is 20 degrees, a negative 20. A negative 10 plus a negative 10 equals a negative 20. Now you can see one rule for adding signed numbers. In these two examples, we added the absolute values of the numbers and kept the same sign in the answer. So the sum of two positive numbers is a positive number. The sum of two negative numbers is a negative number. Now, how do we add numbers with opposite signs, indicating opposite movement on the number line? If the column moves 20 degrees up from zero, 
Then 10 degrees down. The total movement is 30 degrees. But we know that the net change from zero is only 10 degrees in the positive direction, a positive 10. Let's take another example. If the column moves 20 degrees down from zero, then up 10 degrees, 10 degrees in the negative direction represents the net change from zero, a negative 10. So to add a positive and a negative number, you find the difference between their absolute values, keeping the sign of the number with the larger absolute value. To understand how we subtract signed numbers, let's recall what subtraction in arithmetic really means. We can think of this problem as meaning that from five objects, two are to be taken away, leaving three. We can also think of this problem in another way. Asking what is five minus two is the same as asking what number added to two equals five. In other words, five is equal to two plus three. The answer was found by thinking of subtraction in terms of addition. This relation between addition and subtraction is especially useful when using signed numbers. Let's work this same subtraction problem using the number line. To find the difference between positive 5 and positive 2, locate the numbers on the line, then count the number of units from positive 2 to positive 5. The difference is 3 units in the positive direction a positive three. Now let's find the difference between two numbers in a different way. What number, when added to positive five, gives the answer positive three? A negative two. Two units in the negative direction. Subtracting a positive two produced the same result as adding a negative two, which leads to this simple rule for subtracting signed numbers. Change the sign of the subtrahend, and then proceed as in addition. There's another way to think of this rule. Positive 2 and negative 2 have the same absolute value, but different signs. Such numbers are called additive inverses, or opposites. In this case, positive 2 is the additive inverse of negative 2, and vice versa. To subtract positive 2, we added its opposite, negative 2. So we can state the rule for subtraction in another way. To subtract a signed number, you add its opposite. Now let's look at this simple problem in subtraction. In arithmetic, this would mean from four objects, seven are to be taken. This is physically impossible. But as you've seen, a greater number can be subtracted from a smaller one by using signed numbers. You change the sign of the subtrahend and add. So to positive four, you add seven units in the negative direction. The answer is negative three. So we've seen the number line used to demonstrate the rules for adding and subtracting signed numbers. Now let's see what the rules are for multiplying signed numbers. We'll let a railroad represent a number line. We'll let the zero point on the number line be represented by a city. We'll think about three elements in solving the problems that follow. Speed, time, and distance. We'll call distances east of the city positive and distances west of the city, negative. We'll think of a train speed east as positive. We'll think of a train speed west as negative. The third element is time. We'll call the time positive after a train leaves the city going in either direction. The light area on the right half of the clock will represent positive time. We'll call the time negative before a train arrives at the city, coming from either direction. The light area on the left half of the clock will represent negative time. The first problem will deal with just positive numbers. 
A train going east has been averaging 30 miles per hour since it left the city two hours ago. What is its position? The 30 and 2 are both positive because speed is to the east and time is hours after departure. If the train has been traveling east at 30 miles per hour for two hours, it is 60 miles east of the city. Distances east of the city are positive. So positive 30 times positive 2 equals positive 60. A positive number multiplied by a positive number equals a positive number. Now let's deal with two negative numbers. Suppose a train moving west will average 30 miles per hour until it arrives at the city in two hours. What is its present position? The 30 is negative and the 2 is negative. This is because the speed is in a negative direction to the west and the time is negative before arrival at the city. So the train is here, two hours before arriving, 60 miles east of the city. The answer is positive 60 again. This illustrates a second rule. The product of two negative numbers is a positive number. Now let's multiply two numbers with unlike signs. A train going west has been averaging 30 miles per hour since it left the city two hours ago. Because movement is west, the 30 is negative. The 2 is positive because it represents time after leaving the city. Now, what is the train's present position? In two hours, the train will be 60 miles west of the city. Negative 60 is the answer. The product of a negative and a positive number is a negative number. Now let's change the problem to reverse the signs of the 30 and 2. A train is traveling east and will average 30 miles per hour for two hours until it reaches the city. Because the speed is eastward, 30 is positive, but 2 is negative. This is because the 2 represents hours before arrival. Now, what is the train's position at this time? Two hours before arrival, it is 60 miles west of the city. A negative 60. A positive number times a negative number equals a negative number. So now we can state the general rules for multiplying two signed numbers. When two numbers with like signs are multiplied, the product is positive. When two numbers with unlike signs are multiplied, the product is negative. The rules for division are the same. To show this, we make use of the fact that multiplication and division are inverse operations. For example, 60 divided by 2 equals 30, because 30 times 2 equals 60. You saw that when the 30 and 2 were positive, the answer was positive 60. Changing the problem to division, you can see that the quotient of two positive numbers is positive. Because the product of a positive and negative number is negative, the quotient of two negative numbers is positive. Because the product of two negatives is a positive, the quotient of a positive and negative number is negative. Changing this fourth example to a division problem again illustrates that the quotient of two numbers with unlike signs is negative. Now let's review the rules for working with signed numbers. When adding two numbers, if they have like signs, add the absolute values, keeping the same sign. If the numbers have unlike signs, keep the sign of the number with a greater absolute value and find the difference between the absolute values. To subtract signed numbers, mentally change the sign of the subtrahend and proceed as in addition. The rules for multiplication are these. When multiplying two numbers with like signs, the product is positive.
When multiplying two numbers with unlike signs, the product is negative. The rules for division are the same as those for multiplication. The quotient of two numbers with like signs is positive. And the quotient of two numbers with unlike signs is negative. Your understanding of positive and negative numbers and the rules that govern their use is basic to your progress in mathematics.